Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 6. Hosea 4 and verse 6. If you guys want to throw that up on the big screens, Brother Tyler, thank you so much. Thank you to the media people in the back. Thank you to all the media people over here hidden in the media room. Hosea 4, 6, you, you heard me mention this. I don't even have to go there. In fact, I have another text tonight, and I'm going to go there, and we'll leave this one up. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You heard me read that a little bit ago. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest unto me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Whew, Lord, have mercy. We better pay attention to that one, huh? And then I want to go to Matthew chapter 12, Matthew 12, verse 43 to 45 in Matthew chapter number 12. In verse 43, the Bible says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even, show, even so, excuse me, shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And for those that have known him and for those that have turned away, that is an incredible scripture right there to say to those with this eternal security uh, push and propaganda. That's a great scripture right there. Explain that one to me. And that is in the New Testament if you want to argue that one too. And so, but we're not going to, praise God. We're just going to give you the facts and the facts speak for themselves. I want to preach for a few moments on spiritual warfare all through this week. Father, we love you. We bless you and we thank you for a most incredible time together. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the hunger that is in the house, the people that are being saved, the, the souls that are being touched, Father. We certainly are grateful. And we just pray that you bless every need at their level and whatever that need might be. And we ask you, we love you, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and let everybody say amen and amen. And by the way, thank you, Lord, for moving in here tonight already. Woo, Jesus. Come on, everybody. Come on and bless the Lord tonight. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James chapter 1 and four, verse number 14. James 1 and 14. I'm trying to take my time and slow down a little bit because I feel such an urgency to just go ahead and preach here tonight. But I just want to take my time and say some things that I think are very pertinent to where we're going. In James chapter 1 and verse number 14, the Bible says, but every man is tempted. I want us to kind of take that scripture right there and just expound for a few moments to say this. None of us are exempt from temptation. Everybody in here that's walking, talking, living, and breathing is going to be tempted by something. Now, there are those of you that are up in years, and when I say up in years, I mean respectfully up in years. And your trial or temptation, I'm, I'm trying not to laugh with you all. Come on, I'm trying... Y'all know I love you, and I'm not going to be mean and hateful in Jesus' name. That, that's not nice. That's ridiculous. So those of you that are, um, okay, let me preach now. This, this doesn't happen often. Ain't no funny business when I get to preaching. But let me say it this way. When you reach a certain age, I, I feel like your desires start to, to change, and then there are things that used to really push on you and pull on you more than what you ever had before, and I think they, they diminish a little bit, if you will. It's, it's young people that have a, a very big challenge that there are temptations that they have to deal with often. Uh, for uh, uh, a young lady, it's going to be different than a young man, but the fact is, I want you to get this, every man is tempted. That's in verse number 14. Not just Pastor Todd, not just his wife. Not just people in leadership, those in ministry, those on the redeem team, those on the prayer line, those in the altars praying for people. It's not just church leadership. And it's not just the tier of volunteer teams that are going out and trying to make a difference in a church and volunteering at some point and some way, shape, or form. I want everybody in here to understand there's no difference Every one of us are going to be tempted. So I want to make it very clear and I want to be adamant about it that you've got to understand that when you 
submit your life to the Lord and you say, God, you are mine and I'm yours, you need to understand that the enemy wants to throw temptation at you and why is that? And we'll learn about that next week when we find out how Lucifer, old day star, how hast thou fallen from heaven? And the Bible says there was a time in Job chapter one, in Job chapter two, because he didn't just go once, he went twice. Came back and God said, have you considered Job? And all that he had been through and have you considered Job? So my point is there is a temptation that's going to come at you. So the enemy has a reason to throw accusation at you. He is, the Bible makes it clear in the New Testament, he is the accuser of the brethren. That is exactly what he does. That is his place. He has a one-track mind, a one-track push, and he's not going to deviate from it. He comes, as the Bible says, to steal and kill and destroy. So, in verse number 14, every man, he, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Some of you that have smartphones, smart devices, pads they call them, computer screens to laptops, to a smartphone. You have to be careful getting on them because as I said Sunday night, they will show your children everything. And unfortunately, is the information highway on the interweb and if you get on the internet, it is just that, it is a net. You look at one thing that leads to another thing and then the sideline shows you a picture and if you go there, you go to worse places and then the algorithm of the phone picks up what you're doing and you can get in lots and lots of trouble and you have to be careful. Everybody say amen right there. And the more that smart device learns where your fingers and your thumbs go because it's told by your mind to go, all of a sudden it creates the rhythm of what you're going to look at. So saints of God, your life is the same way. I need you to understand, stop blaming the phone for bringing up stuff that you accidentally tapped on a couple weeks ago. It's truly your mind that gets in an algorithm of looking at things it shouldn't. And that's why Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes that I will not sin against God. I know where my strengths are and respectfully, I think I know where some of my weaknesses are. And so having said that, you just learn not to go around to feed your weaknesses. You just don't do it. You don't go into places that will feed the impediment that you're constantly trying to chisel away at. You go into places where you can celebrate the goodness of God. You go into places that feed your spirit. You go into places that feed your mind and that feed your heart because we are in a spiritual battle I think that there's a lot of people that just think the enemy hangs out at their house all the time. And I don't want to get too one-sided or off balance or stay out from the middle of the road where I'm supposed to be. But listen, you don't need to think that every time you turn around, there's a devil and he's loose and he's in your car or he's in my house or he's in my kitchen. Or now he's in my bathroom. Now he's trying to mess in my bedroom. You need to understand something. There is much heavenly traffic in your life going on as there is hell going on around you. I just feel like stopping and telling somebody we've got more angels left in heaven than what left their first estate. It's a two for one deal, baby. I need to tell you tonight, saints of God, I know we're in spiritual warfare. I know the battle has intensified. I know that he has ramped it up, but let me tell you something. He will never ramp it up unless God accelerates too. He will never put more on you than what you're able to bear. There will never be a temptation taking you but such as common demand. But God will, with the temptation, make a way for you to escape out of there. Ah, don't sit and tell me there's a devil, there's a devil. Oh goodness, there's a God, there's a Holy Ghost there's his son Jesus we've got the blood we've got the word of God we've got church fellowship I got grace I got mercy I've got the anointing of the Lord I got some oil I could keep going we know the enemy has an assignment we know that we're in spiritual warfare 
But I don't want to preach this to the point where there's so much exposure to the evil that we walk away from here thinking, wow, we're really in a, a spiritual battle. And you better absolutely believe that we are respectfully. But please understand, as much as we are in a spiritual battle, you've got to know that God has sent his protection. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy that, yeah, 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 that, I talked about the angels, I talked about Jesus, I talked about the Holy Ghost, I talked about God made it happening, I talked about the Word of God, I talked about fellowship, I talked about all the great things that God has given us, all the offensive material that He has given, I have just preached and told you, just to scratch the surface, and I didn't even throw in there, that everywhere I go, that goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. If I go in the drugstore, goodness and mercy follows me. If I go in the regular store, goodness and mercy mercy follow me. If I go shopping, goodness and mercy follow me. If, I, if, if, if I'm just traveling, goodness and mercy follows me. Goodness and mercy can fly on a, on, a, on a plane. Goodness and mercy will go in a train. Goodness and mercy will get in a locomotive. Goodness and mercy will go with you. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you can turn around and goodness and mercy is still there. It doesn't matter what you go through. So I want you to understand as much as all of us are tempted, you better believe God's not going to leave you weapon listen and he's going to give you the authority to overcome everybody ought to stand up and shout thank God for overcoming power by the blood of the lamb Ooh. so when you really look at verse number 14 I want to make this really clear tonight based upon verse number 14 every man is tempted when you get in yourself Every man is tempted when you get drawn away. So what is, what is James trying to tell us in verse number 14 of chapter number 1? He's really trying to tell us the enemy has the authority that you give him. Because in order for you to be tempted, you have to be drawn away. In order for you... I, did I say anything wrong or am I making a right? Not just assumption here. But a declaration that this is the word of God. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away and starts going somewhere to touch some. When he's drawn away. So whatever you're drawn to, whatever you yield to, you become its servant to obey. Whatever you yield to. Come on, everybody. You don't have to stop for everybody. You don't have to let everybody in. You don't have to let everything in front of you. You don't have to let everything in your car. You don't have to take everything that the enemy tries to throw at you. You don't have to take the mess that he gives you. Listen, whatever you yield to, I just want us to understand we are all tempted when we get drawn away. When you get up on your own, when you do your own thing, when you get to looking at stuff you shouldn't, when you get to tasting stuff you shouldn't, feeling stuff you shouldn't, letting something emotionally move you, you should. You got to be careful you got to be careful let me tell you there are some people that can say I can listen to any kind of music and it doesn't phase me oh no you can't you have got to be careful because you've got to understand where that lyric originated what those musicians did to ask the blessing of hell upon their stuff oh you can call me old-fashioned if you want to but but I know what preaching works and I'm telling you something, saints of God, you got to watch what gets in your ear gates. you got to watch what goes through your eye gates. I can't tell you how many people have lost their job, their home, a beautiful wife that they love that stuck with them through thick and thin because they married something on a video screen that they never could touch and handle. Something probably 25 to 30 years younger. Ain't nobody going to help pastor tonight, but I'm going to preach on anyhow. You don't know how many marriages have been ruined because of that bunch of junk inside of a device with two people doing things that are meant to be holy and sacred but the enemy loves to pervert things I'm just here to get up in his face tonight I'm here to tell him you are a liar I'm here to tell him you can't be free don't get drawn away I'm telling you I feel God here tonight I don't mean to preach here, but I'm just going to talk to you now. I meant to say this in that preaching voice, but I'm going to talk to you. 
You don't have to take the calls of a woman that's crying with tears in her eyes. You don't have to take the calls of the men that say, I don't know how this happened. Pastor, I don't understand how this happened. And I can tell them, I can take you back to the place where you heard me preaching and you went and did it anyhow. We are in a spiritual battle. And if you surrender and throw your white flag up and say, I'll do whatever you want me to, devil, he will take your life. He doesn't care to kill your children. He doesn't care to wreck your home. He doesn't care to get rid of your babies. The devil is a liar. And redemption has got to put its foot down and say, no, no, no. You can't have my purpose. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord tonight. Come on, somebody. All it takes is a look. All it takes is for the enemy to control your eyes. And if you see it, all of a sudden it starts happening. You want something bad enough, you'll make room for it. You want something bad enough, you'll do whatever you got to do to get it. I've been there before. Don't get quiet now. You don't know the times I've walked through my house and looked at stuff. Well, I could get rid of that, get rid of that, and I never used that. I could sell that. If I put these three items together, I could get this. <laughs> Listen, it works with everything, saints of God. It does. You, you women know how to be thrifty. Well, so you men do too, it sounds like. Hey, man, you know how to do things. You know how to put something on the clearance rack, you call it. You know they old timey when they call it the clearance rack. <laughs> Can I preach on the clearance rack? So let me tell you something. Whatever you desire in your life, you make room for it. You figure out ways to get it. And, and let me tell you something. It's the same in the Word of God. If you hunger for the Word of God, it'll get you up early. You will get in the Word of God. You'll get some commentaries. You'll get some good Bible references, and you will start to pull together spiritual assets called the Word of God. The only thing besides Israel that God gave us physically that we have this representation of heaven. Not just the Bible, but we have Israel, and there are prints all over it that says he was here. We're in a spiritual battle. We're in spiritual warfare. Every man is tempted when you are drawn away. So remember, if you create, if the enemy creates the compromise, you give in, that's when you are drawn away. And that's when you are tempted. And that's where the problem starts. So everybody's tempted. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, that's all of us. We're all in this together. All of us are going to be tempted by something. Tempted to yell back at them. Tempted to get back at them. Tempted to go ahead and tell them off in an email. Tempted to go ahead and respond to that text the way you know you shouldn't. It's spiritual warfare. We are not here fighting against one another. You brothers and sisters should never want to choke somebody out. You should never want to get them by the hand. I'm, I'm, I'm digressing the other direction. You'll see. You should never want to grab them by the arm real sternly. You should never want to jerk them up out of a pew. I'm going to keep going. You should never want to speak to them harshly. You should never... This is not a battle in the physical. Whenever you find yourself really getting mad and angry at someone and you want to fleshly grab a hold of them, and I just gave you one line item after another from, from, from least to greatest, I'm telling you, saints of God, it is a spirit. It is a spirit that operates in people. So stop letting people's spirits get on your nerves. We are in a spiritual battle. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. So this is not a physical battle we are in. It's not. Whenever you see people fight, and whenever, it is because there is something that has stirred their spirit up. And they tangle. And that's what a spiritual battle looks like. If you watch people fight, that's what spiritual battles look like. It's a back and forth. It's a back and forth. Let me tell you what the back and forth looks like. Are you ready? Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Now, I don't normally do this, but because we have some time, well, we did have time. 
I don't know what happened to the time. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke, and I'm, I'm going to go to verse number, I'm going to go to verse 1. Luke 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost. It's just fun saying that until you get there. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't believe all that stuff. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and then those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. The devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command that this stone that it be made bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment in time. Remember when I said a moment, in a moment of time. That's how the enemy does it. He never gives you the whole spiel. He gives you just a moment. He gives you a glimpse. He gives you a pick. He gives you a quick second shot of a video. He gives you a little movement, tells you how great it would be. It's just a moment. It's just a moment. It's just a moment. Never trade a moment for eternity. Never trade a moment for eternity. Never trade a moment for eternity. The devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. The enemy always wants you to get the glory. He always wants you to receive the glory. He always wants to give it to you. And the Bible said, the devil said, this power will I give, the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord God, and him only shalt thou serve. He brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. That's not your entire body off the side of a cliff. It's your foot against a stone is what that scripture was talking about. Okay? Jesus answering said, it is, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. For a season. When you overcome, it grants you a space and season that he leaves you alone. It's right here in the scripture. There's no way you're going to tell me he never gets off my back. He's constantly on my back. When you shake him off, he has to get away from you for a season. In the name of Jesus, come on somebody, get that right there. Thank God for peace. Thank God for peace. Thank God for peace. Now let me, let me just, Jesus full of the Holy Ghost returns from Jordan. When he's full of the Holy Ghost, now he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted 40 days by the devil. When you are led by the Spirit, it will mean that there will be times that your flesh will have to undergo or endure some temptation. Now the first thing that I, in, in my mind, just want to argue a little bit about this. Why would you even have a conversation with the enemy? How many of you have ever heard me say, don't even talk to him? But I have to be truthful and tell you, I have to back up on that statement and tell you, I tell him off all the time. I'm sitting there telling people, don't even talk to him. And I find myself saying, devil, you are a liar in the name of Jesus. And so we find it clear in the scripture that Jesus clapped back at him. I'm going to use today's terminology for this new generation. Jesus, in other words, answered the most critical person that he would have to deal with. And that was the devil that was trying to see what he was made of. Because the first thing that is tested is his externals or his body. And so we understand almost right away, okay, Jesus was led of the Spirit, but then he reflects back on, I'm hungry. And so... He's very hungry, so he's very human. Having said that, the devil asked him to make the stones bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus was not going to sell his birthright over hunger. We all remember that story. It's an old trick of the enemy. Let me get him when he's weak. Can I preach this? When you're hungry, when you've worked all day, 
when you're not in the right frame of mind and when you're tired, do not answer people back that you've had a, that you've had a problem with. Don't. I won't have meetings with people that aren't feeling well, that may be tired or not in the right frame of mind. It's not the time to meet with them. I'm not going to ask people for something when they're not in the right spirit. I'm not going to approach people when it's not the right time. Going to a funeral is not the right time to ask a lot of things. Going into a wedding is not the right time to bring things up. There is a right time for everything that goes on in your life. And I want you to understand, you can keep yourself out of a lot of battles if you will just understand, I'm tired right now. I'm going to have to answer this very short and sweet and quick and say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And drop the mic. <laughs> In other words, you have to know who you are and who you are. Yeah. And you have to realize that the enemy knows the right time to try to push you physically. Yeah. And I know that I am not me when I am very hungry or coming off of a fast or my body's tired or I know it's just not the right time to call that person back. Sometimes it's better for me to just go on ahead and get cleaned up, get me uh, some honey, some tea, and let the hot water hit it and sit down and drink about, drink some of it, clear my mind, and pray, God, give me strength before I make this phone call because my body might be going through a test. Because God might be saying, I can't let him do what I have called him to do without his body being tested first. And I can't give this boy everything he wants. I can't give this man of God what he's asking me for if I haven't proved his body. I want to make sure he doesn't fall for everything that speaks ne negatively against him. Is everybody with me? So you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble when you get in a quarrel with somebody. That's old school terminology. When you get in a fight with somebody. When you get in a bad disagreement with somebody, don't text them stuff. Don't email them stuff. Amen. Amen. Don't fight with people on an email. There, uh, you, you can caps, you can put quotes in it, you can do all that stuff you want to. It just makes it worse because they never hear your heart that way. We're talking about spiritual warfare. And I'm just telling you, there are some easy things the enemy can just pick people off. Call someone up on the phone. I'm telling you, most commonly, 95% uh, of the time, most things can be fixed if you'll just sit down and go to lunch with somebody. Amen. Meet them somewhere where everybody's there. If you all get into it, you'll be too embarrassed to finish it. <laughs> Come on, high five your neighbor. We're talking about spiritual warfare here. We're talking about spiritual warfare. Okay, I've got to hurry. Everybody learning something. You, you've got to understand the Lord's going to test this tabernacle. The Lord's going to test this temple. I'm going to see how much Todd Hoskins can get away with. Not everything that comes to you uh, is of the devil. That God knew. God knew and he let it happen. God knew and he released it. Come on, everybody. Uh, come on now. And I, I really get real, real, I'm, I'm just real, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm real defensive. <laughs> Sometimes when I get on the internet and I hear people say, where was God when all this happened? Where was God when that happened? Yeah, this is where your Jesus was. Where was he at? Nowhere to be found. And I just really want to type back and say, well, if you, if you wouldn't have kicked him out, he would have been there. I try not to say stuff. I really do. <laughs> Or I want to I want to clap back and say how how long has it been since you got down on your knees and prayed? Crickets. Come on, saints. Not everybody. Never mind. Second thing that got tested: his heart and intentions. His heart and his intentions got tested. I believe God does this to his people a lot. When he gets ready to really do something for you in your life, your heart and your intentions are going to be tested because God's not going to give you something that's going to end up turning you away from him because I've seen a lot of people do it. Oh, I just want God to save my husband, and he does. Oh, I've always wanted a house, and he gives them a house. I've always wanted a baby, and here comes the baby. And as quick as they get everything they want, see ya. 
Can I use that old school country terminology again? It's ridiculous. What's wrong with me tonight? That's using home words. <laughs> Just Jill and I. So what the devil did was showed him the kingdoms of the world. The devil did this in a moment of time, in a moment of time, in a moment of time. Quick snapshot. Look how good that looks. Oh, look how. And, and, and most commonly, if it's a picture you're looking at, it's a moment. They're not moving. They're not waving at you. You don't have a little 22-year-old body going, hey, 65-year-old. I love old men. Come to Miami, Florida. I would love to wrap my arms around your old self. <laughs> We're talking about spiritual warfare. Come on. Man, who was that for? <laughs> I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing. Because it's a moment. They take a picture of a moment. A moment. That lion devil. Man, you wonder why I preach like this? Because again, you never get my side. You never get it. It happens. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. I'm saddened by it, but I got to preach it. I got to preach it. And for women, it's the same way, by the way. For women, it's the same way. I, I, I know them little fellers putting them little low-rise deals on and doing all they do, trying to, trying to, yeah. Give out old boy 40 years. He ain't going to look like that in 40 years. Praise God. <laughs> that big old tattoo is going to go like this. <laughs> Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> what is going on in here? Whoa. I'm not normally like this. But, but it's the truth. It's a moment. It's a mo oh, Lord, we, get, we need somebody to get their child now. Hallelujah. <laughs> it just bailed me out. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that was good timing. The devil did this in a moment of time, showing him all the kingdoms of the world, offering him the power and the glory, the power and the glory. I, I'm telling you, saints of God, that those are two things that people really can't seem to, to, to keep their hands off of it. Power and glory. Power and glory. Power and glory. I feel sorry for these guys that have power and glory. Some of these football stars, some of these basketball stars, stars power and glory. Some of these supermodels, I don't know their names. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I really don't know any basketball people, probably not much. I'm, I'm just not into it. It's, it's where they get power and glory. You've got to be careful with power and glory. But the devil wanted to offer it to him because he want God, he, his heart and his intentions were tested. First of all, the enemy needs to know that you're not going to give up that fast. The enemy just needs to know that. So this is when Jesus answered, get thee behind me, Satan. I just love everything the Lord says. Amen. And, and then last but not least, it's if you are. And wow, is this not the big one? Is this not the big one? Because we come to church and we lift our hands up and the enemy says, if you are who you say you are. And then we, we go and we stand there in defeat. And, and then we want to go to the altar. Oh, now everybody's going to know that you're not who you say you are. It all goes back to the big if. That's the contingency. Again, it's the accusation that comes. If you, if you were who, and he gets us with this every single time we come to church. Doesn't matter who we are, who we are. I can go into places where I might feel some intimidation. Some insecurity tries to creep in. And the enemy starts talking to me. What you going to do now? And I just have to clap back and say exactly what I've always done. I'm not preaching. The Holy Ghost is. God's, God's got this. He brought me here. Or I wouldn't be here. Come on, everybody. That if is huge. That if is huge. I, I can tell you people. I want to talk to you, church. Are you all ready? I can tell you people that that have the most 
amazing talent to sing. And they're some of the most insecure people you've ever met. I'm telling you, on some of the biggest stages in the country, and I've talked to them, and they'll whisper to me, I'm scared to death. What are you scared for? I just don't know if I'm able to do this. What are you talking about? Come on, everybody. Don't get quiet on me. So if you think you're the only one that has insecure moments in your life, I need to tell you about a whole lot of people I know. And then they lean in and say, that guy right there, he doesn't think he can sing at all. And I'm sitting and you think that is incredible. But the reason why this happens is because it's the same one that came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, then you ought to be able to do something great. And then he starts twisting scripture. Are y'all with me? Todd Hoskins, if you're such a great preacher, everybody you prayed for would get healed. If you're such a great preacher, all those lost people would always get saved. If you're this, if, 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 it's always that. Are y'all with me? I'm secure because the security has walked in my life. I know who I am because Jesus has saved me. And that's, that's why I know that I have his grace on my life. Are you with me? So one of the biggest questions of your life is your faith. It's always if you are, if you are. The devil leaves him for a season and it's 828. Wow. And I mean to tell you the best part of this message is right here. So I'm going to give it to you. Okay, I'm going to give it to you in a, in a little short amount of time. God moved by the spirit and the youth and move in the nursery and move in the children's church. Let the Holy Ghost move back there. He returns. This is what you have to get. This is what comes after the temptation. Man, am I really who God says I am? Um, can I overcome this temptation? Because if no one's looking and it's just me and this voice, if I could maybe just get a piece of that bread. Maybe no one will see it. And, oh, I'm supposed to perform, so I need to jump off of here and not get hurt. I'm supposed to perform. Man, everybody's, everybody's performance driven. Everybody's. I, I am happy when God tells me to come up here and teach a little bit for the first 10 minutes. I'm happy with that. I'm happy slowing down and saying, okay, God, sorry. Let, let me just, let me slow down. Because this, this isn't performance driven. I can't do it in my flesh. Come on, everybody. Do you think I'm not dependent on God right now? <laughs> you think I haven't said, God, you got to help me or it's not going to be good. So, so please understand that this is why you hang in there. Because the devil leaves for a season and the Bible says he returns in the power of the Spirit. He returns in the, in the power of the Spirit. You might say, Pastor, where is that? Okay, go with me to verse 14. We're still in uh, Luke chapter 4. Let's go to verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Ooh, that's where it's good. Some of you that are going through temptations, you need to just, you just need to clap back and say, hey, devil, I'm about to return in the power of the spirit. I'm going to overcome you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to overcome you, walk up on you, tread on serpents and scorpions. He has anointed me. And all of a sudden, after all of this temptation is over and he returned in the power of the spirit. That's why you're going through what you're going through. Because when you get through it, you're going to return in the power of the spirit. Come on, saints, it's the best part of the message. I need y'all to get happy with me here. Verse, uh, wait a minute, let's read verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the church on the Sabbath day, synagogue, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And why do you go through what you go through? To get right there. This is the best part of the message.
Come on, come on, saints. That's the best part right there. Do you know why some of you have been so tempted lately? Because there and he hath anointed me is about to come into your life. Do you know why some of you have been so tempted to go ahead and grab that while no one's looking? Because you're about to return in the power of the Spirit. Do you know why some of you are in waylaid and you didn't know whether you could weeble wobble and get back up because you're getting ready to go back to where it was you were brought up. Walk up in the house and grab the Bible and say, he hath anointed me. I'm going to get my family back. I'm going to get my nieces and nephews back. Come on, come on. They're coming in. I'm going to get them all back. I'm going to go in under the anointing and they're going to cave under the power and God's going to bring them in. Brother Brandon, I might be under a lot of pressure right now, and I'm speaking from my heart. I am under an immense amount of pressure right now. But when I come through this, I'm coming out under the power of the Spirit. I may have a load and a half on my shoulders right now, but you lying devil, I come to tell you when I get this thing off of me and I cast all my care on the Lord, he hath anointed me to preach this gospel. He hath called me to give deliverance. He has called me to help heal them. I'm going to walk up. I feel God in the house. Woo! That's why, that's why there's four, three pages of this. And all I did was just gave me this much because I knew you are not going to get through this. And it's 834 and I wish it was 814. Because that right there, that right there is why you push. That right there is why you don't question. That right there is why you've been in a wilderness for 40 days and you're hunger, uh, hungry and your body's beaten up and he's testing your body and your heart and your intentions and he's testing if you are who you say you are and he's testing everything about, uh, well, if I'm going to give you this power and this glory, let's see how his intentions are. You're going through all of this saints of God because you're about to return in the power of the spirit. You're bigger than you think you are. You got more power than you think you have. You need to understand you are a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal generation. Y'all need to understand if you got the blood on you, you've got the power of God resting on your life. Woo! Is everybody remotely by somebody that you're relatively close to? Is everybody kind of close to somebody you feel comfortable with? What's going on? No one is? Come on, I feel some boldness. I feel the anointing. Is everybody around somebody you can talk to? Okay, get there quick. Let's stand up all over the church. I want you to look at somebody and truthfully tell them, no wonder we've been through what we've been through because something is about to happen in this place, in my family, in my children, in my church, to my pastor, to his wife and his kids and their spouses. God's getting ready to move in here. God's getting ready to bring my family in here. They're going to come in here, and I don't care if they're young adults. We got tons of them. I don't care if they're children. We got tons of them, and thank you, Jesus. I say that respectfully, and youth and children and babies. Come on, God. They're coming in. 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 Oh, I don't find I don't want to wear myself out, but I just feel like prophesying. They are coming in. We are ready for them here. God is getting ready to move for your family. Woo! That was not me. That was God wanting to tell us our family's getting ready to come in. Some of y'all need to some of y'all need to leave your parking spot open. They need it. Some of you need to scoot over a little bit because they're coming in to sit next to you because you were willing to park over there and them up here. Come on, somebody. Turn around and high five your neighbor and shout, they're coming in. They're coming in. <laughs> 